Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing on this beautiful Tuesday? I am back with today's daily devotional. It's a good one. I will be reading from Jesus in red. Jesus in red. This is going to be just a little lengthy, but I got to be at work at 7 o'clock, so I got to get through this. And the title is, and I also put it in the, the description along with the reference scriptures, Sinless Savior. Sinless Savior. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convict me of sin? Question mark. And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Many of us are hearing voices, but it's not the voice of God. And that reference scripture is John 8, 45 through 47. While the world would have no trouble accusing you and me of being sinners, we can never do that. We can never do that with Jesus. He was squeaky clean. He was without sin and walked in perfect righteousness. Neither the war world nor the law could accuse him. If you asked a skeptic if Jesus ever did anything wrong, he would probably point a finger at his anger when he cleared the buyers and sellers from the temple. But who cannot rejoice at the thought of God clearing out the Okay, I had to tell evangelists of his day. And the definition of televangelist is someone who makes regular television broadcasts to promote a particular form of Christianity and raise money for particular Christian groups or projects. There's always going to be someone that's going to be in control of doing things that shouldn't be done. If he wasn't angry at evil, he wouldn't be good. Wrath against evil is evidence of goodness of God. The world often complains about hypocrisy, but we cannot charge Jesus with that sin. None of his accusers could find fault with him. So why didn't they believe his words? Jesus once again put his finger on the problem. They were not of God. Sometimes we just got to be honest and just acknowledge that our behavior does not deflect or reflect um, our father. It just doesn't. <laughs> they were children of the devil. And it was his works that they were doing. You know, the Bible says um, in, in Ephesians 6 and 13, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual witness in high places. That's the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, sometimes we have to recognize the spirit that is operating through an individual. It doesn't matter the long dress. It doesn't matter the long sleeve. It doesn't matter, you know, the button uh, being so tight to the throat they can't even swallow. It doesn't matter. You got to see the spirit. Soul search. Have I experienced righteous? anger do i feel angry at evil we supposed to love what god love and hate what he hate and he he does not like evil he does not like wickedness he does not um he doesn't like any of that stuff and we should be the same and the prayer is father make me more like jesus we are to have the anger that jesus have when certain things is going on Certain things are being accepted. Thing, certain things are being looked over. We should have that godly anger. 
and I wrote uh, just a few things down <clears throat> as the Lord was giving to me as I was just trying to read the devotional just to kind of, you know, get it in my spirit. And what I wrote, I said, when I was growing up as a, as a child, we looked forward to going to church. The love was so real and authentic. You could feel the love at the front door. Things have changed. Love has changed. People don't love like they used to. You didn't see the discord amongst the brothers and sisters. If it was, it wasn't show and tell. It wasn't on display. And it wasn't in your face like it is today. You didn't see brother you didn't see brothers and sisters tearing down one another, lying on one another, looking over one another, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And what I what Lord showed me in these devotionals, the last few devotionals, Jesus really making it known who belongs to the Father and who does not. And he is doing it out of love. You know, because he said, Love and kindness have I drawn thee. And that's the only way he can draw us if he if he corrects us and convict us out of love or with love. Um, out of love. It's just like when an adopted parent. Okay, hold on. I may be getting into something else. Okay. It's just like um it's just like when an adoptive parent sits an adopted child down to let that child know that they were adopted. They are not, that they are not the biological parent. There is a way to do that. And that is what Jesus is doing in this hour. He is letting us know some of us have biological father and many of us a adoption father, adopted father. It is imperative to know in this hour who your biological father is. Some of us are in, in the middle of identity crisis because we're, we're twist between biological and adopted. Because of sin, that's a representation of the adoption. See, when sin entered into the world, that caused that separation. And you know, when there's an adoption process going on, there's a separation there. And so Jesus going to the cross, he's trying to reconnect. He's trying, that his reason for going to the cross was to reconnect us with our biological. That's what, that was the reasoning for him going to the cross. So we can reconnect, so we can come back together, so we can be back in fellowship. That's what, that's what it was all about. The question that I have today that Jesus dropped in my spirit, where is the Jesus of today? Where is the godly anger over what we see in the four walls of today? We've let down the standards. We have closed our eyes to things that should have been addressed at the front door. We have compromised and allowed things to enter and to enter in for membership, money, acceptance by the world, popularity, competition, and God is not pleased. He's not pleased. Look around. First Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, those that proclaim that he is, that he is our father, what shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel of God? He is starting with us. Why? Because we should know better. We should know to obey the gospel. We are without excuse but not excused because we are professing salvation and that he is our father. He said he's starting there because we, we should know better. We should know how to treat one another. We should know how to love one another. All those things, that's, uh, that's what kindergarten, we should know that stuff. But yet and still, we still falling short and loving one another, treating one another right, respecting one another, being concerned about one another. He has a problem with that. Where is the character? Uh, where is the character of Christ? It's missing in the body of Christ. Hebrews three and eight, and I'm almost out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forevermore. He changes not. We should not be changing or compromising to fit in or to be accepted by the world. If Jesus dwells on the inside of us, 
The gospel doesn't change because of time. Neither should we. We should not be changing or compromising because the times have changed. Because of different generation. The gospel remains the same no matter what. And so we got to get back. We almost need to go back to basic one-on-one. Love. My son wrote a song, Where is the Love? In the house of God. Where, where is the love in the body of Christ? Where is the love? Where is the love? So with that being said, that's, that's the end of the devotional. It was short. Um, again, the title, Sinless Savior. We have to get back to doing what the Father said for us to do. If we are saying that is our Father, our characteristic should show that that's our father. And if it's not, then we need to check who we are calling our father. And we need to make sure that it's a biological father. And we're not in an, and we, and you're not caught in a adoption process. So we want to make sure that what we got going on, that we know, that we know that we know without a surety who we serve. And so with that being said, I thank God for those that showed up. Um, I even thank God for those that show up after. We have to understand those that show up at the beginning is just, is, and the ones that show up after is just as valuable as the one that showed up during the live. You know, uh, the Lord dropped in my spirit uh, when they was in the vineyard working. Some of the guys, uh, the workers got upset because uh, the one that came later received the same pay. Fair is fair, you know. He said, hey, you know, we, we talked about what, you know, what I was going to pay you and you got that. What you complaining about? <laughs> you know, sometimes we find the silliest things to complain about. But I just think and I just praise God that he, he, he is just fair across the board. You cannot accuse him of anything. So, but you can, like they said in, in this, um, in this reading here, the only thing that they could possibly accuse him of was anger. And that was because how they turned uh, 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 his father's house. He, he was upset. It's just like you leave on vacation and you come home and your kids done through parties and stuff is, is, is turned over and, and broke and destroyed. You're going to be upset. I don't care how safe you are. I don't care how long your skirt is. You're going to be upset. So he had a right to be upset. He was offended. Like, how dare you? So, with that being said, that is the end of that devotional. Again, the title, Sinless Savior. Reference scripture is John 8, 45 through 47. And that concludes the, the, um, the devotional for today. I'm going to say a quick prayer and I'm out of here. Heavenly Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for allowing me once again, to come before your people with the reading of the devotional. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins, everything that I may have said or done or thought. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I ask you, oh God, Lord, to touch each and every one that will come up on this live. I thank you for those that showed up during the live, but Lord, I also thank you for those that will come after the live. Lord, there's no big guys. There's no little use. There's no respect of person, oh God. Lord, and I'm not having no respect of person. Lord, and I just ask you, oh God, Lord, to just bless them as they go throughout their day. Lord, cover them, protect them, keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger until we meet again. Amen. Everyone be blessed and know that this life is worth living if you're living it with Christ.